All right. So we um, looked at a couple of thoughts um, yesterday, which we said are very important. They're foundational to understanding the concept of um, of how this world works. You know, the concept of how this world works and in relation to, um, you know, human affairs. Now, um, uh, everyone would agree that um, as the years and the days have gone by, you know, there's been a gradual, there's been a gradual, um, you know, um, shift, you know, in consciousness, you know, to the, um, the existence of life being to be spiritual, the existence of life to be spiritual. There's been a gradual, you know, widespread uh, shift in consciousness. We, we live in a time where um, lots more, lots more people than, than we used to have in this world, you know, in, you know, about 50 years ago, a hundred years ago, we live in a time today where lots more people, you know, have become overwhelmingly aware or conscious of, um, the existence of life, all right, being spiritual. Now, there is, there is almost nowhere you will turn to today. There is almost no place you will look into today that um, there is almost no place you will turn to today in the world that does not, um, that does not speak, speak that fact, speak the fact of the the reality of, you know, of, of all existence being spiritual. You see, that understanding, that awareness, all right, now, you know, is seen to cut across, is seen to be displayed everywhere, seen to be expressed everywhere. You see, and, and it's, 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 um, it's, it's amazing, actually, because um, um, as far as that is concerned, we are actually seeing scriptures come to pass, right? We are seeing scriptures come to pass. You know, um, the overwhelming push, the overwhelming um, trust, you know, into the, or towards the, you know, spiritual awareness, you see, of all, of all things, all right? Scripture talks about that, you see. So we see, we see humanity, humanity, you know, um, today becoming more spiritually aware than, than, than previous times, you see, becoming more spiritually conscious, you see, than previous times, you see. Now, it is one of the reasons why, if, if you look around you, you see, on the basis of this, you would see that that is the number one reason why um, um, success today, success today is not, um, is no longer um, dependent by degrees success today is no longer dependent on um on the secular conventional you know education system you see there is another education all right that you know Lots more people are beginning to become overwhelmingly reliant and dependent on, you know, 
as a basis, as a foundation, as a trust for success. You see, you look around you, you see lots, lots, lot of people who have um, in different fields have proven to be, you know, in court by setting standards, you know, prone to become successful. You see, without um, the traditional, conventional, you know, um, um, yardstick, you know, that was previously used in, in previous times, you know, to measure or determine success. You see, the, the, the humanity, humanity has become or is becoming more self-aware, all right, than it used to. Humanity, all right, you know, has increasingly today become more spiritually self-aware, more spiritually, you know, conscious, you know, than it used to. That's the whole of humanity. You see. And, and this is this is something that every believer must understand. You see, listen, it's one of the reasons why, you know, um, um, in different ways, you know, I have, you know, in different meetings, in different opportunity to interact with people, I have always voiced out the fact that spirituality is no longer limited to, you know, lingual expression. By that, spirituality is no longer limited to, you know, verbal, you know, um, 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 communication. It's no longer limited to, you know, language. It's not just, it's no longer, it's not just language. Spirituality, all right, the understanding of true spirituality being a life that is lived, that is expressed, you see, is gradually overtaking the consciousness of all of mankind. So one of the traps, one of the traps that believers, Christians, believers in Jesus Christ, all right, you know, tend to fall into today, you see, is the, is the false ideology, you know, of spirituality being just um, a language, spirituality being just, um, um, you know, some kind of, a, some kind of a, a behavior, you know, spirituality, you know, limited to a meeting, you see, because listen, whether you like it or not, when you look around you, you would see that, um, you would see that humanity, when, now listen, when I say humanity, I'm talking about this is, this cuts across, you know, religion, whether, you know, Hinduists, Buddhists, you know, Muslims, you know, name it, all right, new age, you know, Name it. So when I talk about, when I use the word humanity, I want you to think across, all right, think across and beyond, you know, religion, the divides of religion, okay? Think across and beyond the divide of, of ethnicity and religion, okay? Now, humanity, all right, has increasingly become awakened to the reality of um, spirituality. You see, being the being the the basis, all right, for how life is to be conducted, being the foundation, you know, upon which everything is to be built. But at the same time, it's very interesting that a lot of believers, you know, a lot of believers in Christ Jesus, <laughs> you know, ha, are largely unaware of this. Largely unaware of this. You know, 
majority of believers in Christ Jesus, all right, um, think of spirituality as a, a cloth, you know, a clothing, a, a, a regalia, you know, that they can put on and put off, you know, that they can put on when they are going to church, that they can put on when they are going to conferences, and that they can put off when they go into other, when they get involved in other affairs of their lives. You see, while we see, you know, humanity, all right, while we see humanity across the divides of, you know, all religions that exist in the world today, all right, um, gradually and overwhelmingly, you know, coming into a state of awareness, of spiritual awareness, you know, to spirituality as a life to be lived, all right? An awareness of spirituality that transcends language. You see, while, let me, I'm trying to break in different ways. Now, while on the other hand, believers in Christ Jesus have reduced spirituality to, to, to meetings that they go for, to conferences they do, to language, to, you know, you know, words, you know, um, cliches, terminologies. On the other hand, humanity have gradually come to a place of spiritual awareness, of spirituality being a life to be lived. Being a life to be lived. You see, so much so, listen, so much so that a lot of folks, a lot of people, all right, within the spectrum of humanity, all right, are now leveraging on their spiritual awareness, you see, as a tool, as a, you know, um, springboard, as a springboard, all right, from whence to launch into, into business as a springboard, you know, from whence to launch into, you know, different, you know, um, strata of human society, all right? You know, we see a lot of people, in, you know, amongst the, you know, divide in humanity, all right, um, you know, seeing spirituality as a foundation upon which the different you know, interactions of their lives, all right, are to be established upon. You now see people taking spirituality, taking spirituality into the entertainment industry. Now, listen, when I say spirituality, listen, I'm not talking about uh, uh, cult groups. Now, that, that's part of it, all right? I'm not just talking about, you know, occult groups, you know, you know, this phobia, this there's this Illuminati phobia a lot of Christians have. Because about spirituality, you know, um, lived by people in the entertainment industry. Some people, and even some of you listening to me now, will just merely go Illuminati. No, that's just that's just one part of um, you know spiritual expressions. All right, being um, perpetrated by 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 some people within humanity, you know, to express to express their spiritual awareness or their awareness, all right, to spirituality as a tool for, but, but that's not all that there is to spirituality. That's not all that there is to spirituality, you know, in terms of, uh, or as it relates rather to humanity, you know, taking that awareness into the different endeavors. You see, there, there are a lot of people, lots of people, there are a lot of guys who, you know, have taken spirituality, for example, you know, into, into, into forex trading. They've taken spirituality into crypto trading. You see, but before, before all of this, there have been people whom over time, all right, have harnessed, all right, the power of spirituality and have brought the weight, all right, to the degree to which they were aware, they, be, they became aware to it, they brought the weight into their, into what they do. You know, there have been people, all right, who in the tech industry, all right, 
in the information, computer information, you know, industry, all right, technology industry, who, you know, history has proven were spiritually aware. There have been people in the finance sector. There have been people in the entertainment industry. You see, in ent entertainment industry, you see, who have built, as it were, an empire, you see, an empire who have given direction, all right, to a large extent to the ent entertainment industry by leveraging on spirituality. All right, one known person, all right, somebody's already mentioning names here, all right. <laughs> I didn't want to mention names, at least not at this stage. All right. Um, okay. James says um, Steve, Steve Jobs. All right. And um, the and his Indian discovery, you know. Now, so you know them. These are names that we may eventually mention later. But of course, I expect that you know these names. All right. Now, one of the examples I wanted to give, you know, in relation to the entertainment industry is, um, is um, okay. I think, is it okay. In relation to the entertainment industry, is the man who over time now he has passed on now had long been behind what you call the the is it the avengers series you know there's a name you call it the the marvel marvel studio marvel cartoon marvel comics you know who recently i think a couple of years back a year or two two three years ago if i'm not mistaken now you know um you know you know has passed on he's passed on so you know so there have been people like that. The question, for example, if you look at this man now who, you know, had long been behind the Marvel, you know, comics, all right, which is the backbone of what you call the Avengers series, all right, the superheroes. The question is, was that man thinking from as far back as, you know, about, is it about 70, 60 years ago when it was purely comics what was it thinking what the concept of superheroes what was it thinking all right yeah james says 1950 1960s what was he thinking which is about that's like about 70 years ago now what was he thinking you see what was he thinking at the time yes People like James Cameron and, you know, you see, you, 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 these guys are not, you know, you read about, you know, some stories around them, Steven Spielberg, you know, and you, you, you're amazed at the fact that these guys are not even Christians. And yet, within the spectrum of human endeavor, human affairs, this guy, all right, in a way, have in quote proven to be prophets prophets in that they had made predictions used movies to predict use movies to give human addictions human desires to give human desires human addictions you know some kind of future direction and these guys are not saved don't have the holy spirit don't even know who jesus don't even want to care who Jesus is. Many of them are even largely atheists. Largely atheists. I'm getting personal chat messages here. All right, someone says the director of Simpsons. All right. <laughs> he said the director of Simpsons. That one is very scary. You know, you, you look at these guys. You know, and if you take the time to look at this individual now sometimes not so much all right about their private life all right is available on the internet but yeah some of them you can see little stuff here and there that you can bring together tie together and can give you a better picture of what their private life all right are like you see you would see that these guys all right you know have a certain level of spiritual awareness which is driving their innovativeness, which they are leveraging on, you know, for, for their creative, creative, you know, you know, adventures. 
You see, and they are so audacious, audacious in their interpretation, you know, of their so-called spiritual concept, spiritual persuasions, you see, that they put it into content and put it out there for the world to consume. You see. Now we are not going into all of that, but just beginning this, you know, uh, 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 you know, <laughs> this session, you know, by way of, uh, you know, arousing you to, to, the, 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 um, the reality and the importance of being spiritually minded. All right, the reality and importance of how being spiritually minded, all right, is the current backbone, is the current backbone for civilization today. Being spiritually minded is the current backbone. Being spiritually aware is the current, you know, engine room, you see, for, for, for human civilization today. You see, it's, it's just like scripture says, all right, humanity, all right, is going back to the beginning. You know, humanity is going back to as it was in the beginning. You know, in their different endeavors. Now, when I mean the beginning, I don't mean the beginning of the first man, but the beginning in relation to, you know, um, the depth, the, the, the degree of spiritual awareness that man you see, after he had fallen, all right, that the descendants of a Adam, all right, humanity that broke out of Adam, you know, after the fall of the first man, you know, how spiritually aware they were, how they leveraged on the degree of their spiritual awareness to, to build civilizations, you see, to capture, you know, technological concept, you see, to capture, you know, audaciously, you know, conceived, you know, organic civilization. In fact, in that day and time, they were more organically advanced than we are today. That's why you are currently seeing, <laughs> you are currently seeing the transition, all right? We are still largely in the middle of, uh, you know, technological, scientific, you know, you know, advancement. But if you listen, if you've been studying, you will see that even scientists, all right, even scientists, all right, are gradually, all right, arriving at, you know, the, they are gradually stepping into the shores of organic intelligence, all right? Some scientists who are at the forefront, you see, are now beginning to conceive a future, you see, of organic existence, not scientific, not technological, but organic existence. You see, that is where humanity is driving towards with all this thing about clone, about genetic mutation, you know, that's what they are driving towards. You see, that is where humanity, all right, that is where humanity <laughs> is going in the direction of, you see, before the collapse of all things. You see, the collapse, as it were, of all things, is not going to terminate, is not going to terminate into or with the current technological scientific advancement. No, all of the current technological scientific advancement, all right, are all tilting towards an organically driven civilization, not a technologically, scientifically driven civilization, but an organically driven society. That's where humanity is going. All right. A number of scientists are already beginning to prophesy that future. All right. Why majority of others are still envisaging the future of technology. All right. Of scientifically, you know, advanced, you know, civilization.
All right. I don't know if this is making sense to you. <laughs> All right. What we are trying to do is to help everyone to have your mind expanded. You see, to help us step out of that place of, you know, myopia, you know, myopic, you know, perspective, you see, of the world. You see, <laughs> when you go to the internet, all right, when you go to the internet and you begin to see, you know, reports of ongoing research, all right, you know, about, um, you know, how that in the next couple of years, all right, you know, man would be able to live up to 200 years, 300 years. All right, you know, and these are reports coming out of ongoing, you know, genetical um, studies. That's not technology. That's organic civilization. You see, that's organic civilization. There are scientists currently doing researches. You see, now, while the current you know, scientific, technological um, discoveries, all right, or, or pioneers are pushing into a future of advanced technological, you know, um, 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 advanced technological society, you know, where technology, you know, where computer, com computing, you know, um, 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 devices will be created, you know, to facilitate movement, communication, now, some other scientists have seen beyond that era, you see, and they are currently doing studies, doing researches on portals. You see, they are doing they are ongoing researches on, you know, the development of portals as a means for transportation in the future. Now, why some people are looking at a future where cars will begin to fly? <laughs> why some people are looking at the future? You know, where vehicles will be created, put together to move humans to, to, to Mars, all right? For people, humans to begin to travel across the galaxies, all right, through technologically developed vehicles, all right? Some other scientists are beginning to see into a future where man will not need any such gadgets. You see? Now, listen, these are mortal people, mortal mortal men you see daring to think like this daring to sponsor researches sponsor researches thank you somebody says quantum teleportation sponsor researches you know into this field into this first you see And these men, these guys, these people, these women don't care. They don't care about whether or not they are going to live to see it. But they are currently spending their lives, all right, in building a model. You see, they are spending, isn't it amazing at how you see, you know, because some of these guys, now not all of these guys are unbelievers. Some of these guys are saved. But majority of these guys actually are not saved. Isn't it amazing that you see people who don't believe in God, who don't believe in, in life after death, you see, daring to spend their lives, to spend their lives, you see, to spend their lives, all right, in building a future or in laying a foundation or laying foundations for a future for a future, you see, that would be, that would be, you know, so scientifically, technologically, all right, organically advanced. You see, and it's amazing, you see believers on the other hand, are not thinking like this. They're not thinking like this.
You see, let me, let me give one, 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 you know, good example. For example, when you look into what is called, um, currently called the, you know, the crypto space, all right, crypto space. Now, have, haven't you wondered at how, you know, what you, what we currently call the blockchain, blockchain rather, blockchain technology, all right, just came into mainstream. It, if you study the history of blockchain, all right, computing, you see, blockchain technology, you will see that there were people who at a time in the background, all right, began to conceive such a future of computation. You see, when at the time, the world was largely reliant and dependent on a different computation that was the that was the praise of society people behind closed door haven't conceived another type of computational you know system you know of of running you know of you know running human civilization in the background all right behind closed door began to build it they began to build it haven't conceived it they began to write programs you see there were you see the current at the time the current program scientific computer programming languages that existed at that time all right did not see into the possibility of a concept called blockchain technology you see but people in different places began to push the then current you know boundary of programming all right into a new sphere you see of compute computational you know um advancement they began to build on the then existing programming language to conceive another level of computational possibility that did not exist all right in all of the then programming languages they didn't exist but people a number of persons dared to conceive that you see dare to conceive that i remember some 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 years back yeah i think about uh, two years ago <laughs> about two years ago um I was, you know, talking with someone who, you know, was um, in another African country, you know, and we're talking at, you know, um, talking about, um, you know, blockchain technology, crypto technology, you know, crypto technology and all of that. And, um, you know, so while I was, you know, explaining a couple of things, then referencing certain specific crypto currency, you know, the way I mentioned Ethereum, you know, this other, you know, Dearly beloved, you know, man just said, oh, Ethereum, yeah, that Ethereum, you know, it's Illuminati that's behind Ethereum, it's Illuminati. <laughs> you know, because he, he is an older person, you know, I was, uh, you know, if he was a younger person, <laughs> what I wanted to say to him is, what is, what is wrong with you? <laughs> what is wrong with you people? <laughs> I, I'm not interested in whether you know, the persons or the individuals behind the theorem, all right, I am not, I don't give a hoot. And the point is, okay, let's agree, you know, that it's Illuminati. Did the Illuminati tie the hands of Christians? Did they block the heads of Christians, all right, from conceiving, you know, for daring to, you know, step into that frontiers, you know, of, of, of blockchain technology. Did they block? But you see, once unbelievers maybe happen to be at the forefront of something, you know that you know what we do? We Christians usually are like that. Christians mostly will just begin to blame what you call the blackmail game. Stop doing blackmail. So when you look at Vanada, that he's not a Christian, he said he must be Illuminati. He must be. He must be Illuminati. Elon, you know Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Those things that guy is thinking. He wants to go to that guy. That guy is a satanist. <laughs> what 
Why are we quick to associate technological advancement? Why are we quick to associate pioneering, you know, scientific discovery to 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 satanism? Well, saying that alone is us saying that intelligence belongs to Satan. You see, pioneering intelligence, innovative creative creativity, all right, belongs to, to, to worshippers of devils. That's what we are saying. That's what, why are we quick to think like that? Why are we quick to think like that? Or if some people will say, you know, when you look at, when you hear of stories of some, some forex traders, you know, who are making, you know, hundreds of millions. I mean, personal individual forex traders, not corporations now. All right, who are making, you know, $50,000, $100,000, all right, $500,000, you know, a million, two, three million dollars monthly. You know, there are people that will be saying, ah, these guys, these guys, they are... <laughs> They are not of God. <laughs> oh dear Lord. All right. It's 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 interesting actually. <laughs> interesting. Interesting. You see, and, and there are a number of reasons for these kind of things, you know, you know. Uh, um, um, like we have mentioned yesterday, one of the pro one of the problem in this kind of challenge is one amongst a host of others is the misconceived, misconstrued, misinterpretation that we have of um, the um, um, the connection between the Book of Revelations and the conventional, you know, concept we have of what. We call the end times. You know, we call the end times. You know, of the end times. That's that's mis, you know, misinterpretation. You know, of what is called the end times. You know. Anyways, um, let's just proceed. Now, um, just like we're sharing, um, we began sharing yesterday. Now, um, it's important, it's very important that you take being spiritually aware very seriously. It's important that you take being, now listen, throw away religion. All right? Now, I said, throw away religion. Your, your work, your, your, how do I put this now? Your, put religion aside. You see, your understanding, your grabs, of spirituality, you see, be brought to the table. Spirituality to you must not be a clothing that you put on. Spirituality must not to you must not be suit and tie. You see, spirituality to you must not be stickers. You know what I mean. You know what I mean by that. All right, spirituality must not be. Spirituality to you must be a life. The weight of which you are able to bring into everyday affairs. Spirituality must be a life, the weight of which you're able to bring into, into you know, um, into writing. Spirituality must be a life, the weight of which you're able to bring, bring into, into, into music. You see, that you must be able to bring into education. You see, that you must be able to bring into, into finance, into construction, into politics. Spirituality must be a life, the weight of which 
you are able to bring. You are able to listen. There are a whole lot of things. Let me just say this to us, all right? It's not something I've said, you know. There are a whole lot of things we are doing in the background. I'm telling you, there are a whole lot of things we are doing in the background. All right, let me give you a hint. All right, there's an underground work, all right, that we've been doing, all right, where we are holding kingdom, intensive kingdom, you know, um, academy, all right, for military personnel. I'm not kidding you, military personnel. All right, many of us know our regular platform, PS Initiative. You won't see me talk about this. I'm not someone that talk about what we are doing. It's the reason why a lot of people don't know what we are doing. And I love you that way. I'm not, I'm not looking for human appraiser. No, not interested at all. You see, there are stuff that are in the, you know, in the secret that we are doing with, with the military. I'm not kidding you. When I mean military, I don't just mean uh, or job cantonment in Lagos. I mean, military with Nigeria, military cut across the Federation. Cut across the Federation. You'll be, I'm telling you, you'll be shocked at the number. I don't want to scare you with numbers. You'll be shocked at the number of personnel who are, who are registered, who are, who are registering. I'm not talking about 200, 500. I'm not even talking about 2,000. I'm not kidding you. Why are they interested? And these are military personnel, all right, cut across religion. They don't care. Of course, partly because you know what this is, what the nation is like currently, you know. They don't care. Now, in those kind of meetings, all right, we don't go there to teach religion, you understand? We go there to teach kingdom because these guys, all right, these guys have seen all kinds of things. They want, they want a model that works. They don't want a model that is all talk. You see, that works. And I'm not just talking about an initiative where we are praying for our military person. No, this is not, this is going beyond praying for them. And this is not just a meeting where we are, you know, teaching them or we are wanting to teach them to receive Jesus. No. Many of them are Christians. What we are teaching is not just receiving Jesus. It is kingdom. But of course, that's just... Uh, so don't worry about that. Forget I said that. <laughs> but you won't see us talk about it. Post it anywhere. No. No. Post it anywhere. No. No. All right. You know? <laughs> But you see, hmm. I said that to say this. I said that to say this. You see, <laughs> the, 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 the way to live now, all right, is from a place of spiritual understanding, from a place of spiritual functionality. You see, Whose weight, you see, an impact is brought into, you know, your different daily endeavors. Your different daily endeavors. You see, you must be able to bring the weight of spirituality, listen, into forex trading, into crypto trading. You must be able to bring the weight of spirituality you see, into your, your idea for education. You see, into your drive for, 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 for e-commerce. You must be able to bring the weight of spirituality into marketing. Into marketing, into sales. Into your data, and your data analytics, you know, um, 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 you know services. Or enterprise. I'm telling you, that is the way to go now. That is the way to go now.
That's the way to go now. That's the way to go now. <laughs> oh dear Lord Jesus. Now, all right. I hope I hope we are all still here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're here, sir. Yes, sir. Now, um, yesterday, all right, we we began um, began to touch a little bit um, fourth dimension, you know, just you know, touching it, you know. Now, let me quickly explain a couple of things mentioned. It's, it's, a, it's a language, this language, all right? It's fourth dimension may not have been, um, may not have been used, all right, in the scriptures in the Bible as, you know, Exactly the exact phrase for dimension. So people usually feel this somebody here for the nurse. All right. From Genesis to Revelation. All right. The script interactions. All right. Expressed by people. All right. Expressed by people, manifested, lived by people. All right. Um, you know, in a way that cuts across, that cuts across, you know, the the spectrum, you see, of the um, spiritual architecture. Now, when you say fourth dimension, listen, the phrase fourth dimension actually captures, it captures, you know, what we may call um, the spiritual, you know, measure or the spiritual yardstick or the spiritual unit of measurement, you see, for capturing existence for conceiving existence and for expressing existence you see existence listen existence please i want you to listen carefully existence now as conceived by god all right and has you know lived and has expressed by every living being every living being that god created all right you see express life express life within what we may call you know specific units all right specific units of measurement now this specific unit of measurement all right is how you know authentic all right practical existence all right is determined and 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 and, and expressed now let me give you a natural example you know you know that um if you look at on earth all right time i'm sure you know what i mean time as it is experienced on earth we are talking about the january to 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 to, to December, all right, if you're using the Gregorian calendar or if you're using the Jewish calendar, now you know, all right, that these different, you know, calendars are the unit of time. You see, they are the unit of time for measuring life on earth, for determining the measure of life on earth. You see, that is how you arrive at, you know, um, the measure of a person's life, all right? That is how you arrive at the concept of, oh, one person is 52 years old, another person is 101 years old, another person is six years old. Now, do you see how seriously, how seriously you take that? You take it so seriously that you take your birthday seriously. You see, you take it so seriously, all right? that on your birthday, you want to do something important. That day is important to you. 
that day is more important to you than every other day. You see, that goes to show that you are living, you are determining, all right, the true worth. You are determining the true measure of your life, all right, within that unit, that unit by which every existence on this planet, you see, and how you are able to know that you are 52 years old today, you are 101 of the you know, number of the Earth's movement, the number of time that the Earth moves around the sun makes complete circle. Now we understand that you know the Earth makes a complete circle around the sun, all right? All right, in 365 days, then 366 days a leap year, all right? So it takes that number of days for the Earth, all right, to make a complete, you know, a complete, to revolve, to orbit, you know, a complete circle around the sun. And that is what informs how man measures his life on Earth, all right? Which in turn informs how man, all right, um, um, experiences time. So man's experience of time here, is subject to this number one factor, all right? The Earth movement around the sun, all right? And you look, when you go further and begin to study the dynamics of time as it relates to the Earth's, you know, orbit around the sun, all right? You begin to look at how we arrived at, you know, the seven days a week, you know, seven days a week, we arrived at, at it. Now we do not, all right, live in a planet, all right, where the number of days for our week is two days. Now, can you try and imagine, all right, living in a, on a planet, all right, living on the planet where the, pla the planet, all right, makes its complete orbit around its star or its sun, all right, in just two, three months. There are planets like that. There are planets like that. Now, Anyone who lives on that planet will experience time differently. His own experience of time will be different. Now, th that is as it relates to the earth. Now, but you see, when you look at, when you look at the eternities as God brought it forth, please listen, just please follow me. You need to understand this, all right? It doesn't matter what, <laughs> what level of spiritual awareness you have. It doesn't matter. Please, I beg you to pay attention. Now, when you look at the eternities of God, the way God brought forth the multiverses, all right, which is largely referred to as the universe. Now, actually, it's not universe, it's, 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 it's multiple, all right? So the best phrase that has, you know, we, we've come up with is, is multiverses or multiverse, all right? But see, the conglomeration of these multiverses, all right, is what we refer to as eternities or eternity. You see, now, the way God constituted eternity, all right, is in a way that is subject, that is subject to a certain, you know, unit, you see, by which all existence, a certain unit or system, all right, of unit by which all existence, all right, is to be determined, by which the measure or the value by which the way, by which the impact, you see, of all created things. Are to be, you know, determined. You see, now this simple, you know, divine unit, all right, or system of unit by which all existence, all. When we say all, it means all. So this divine system of unit by which all existence, all right, the way, the impact, you see, of the existence of all things are to be determined, all right, is what we today refer to as um, the seven dimensions of existence. All right, 
the seventh dimension of existence, the means by which, all right, existence. Is the means by which all existence, all right, are to be determined. This seven seven dimension or seven dimensional space or seven dimensional realities, all right, by which all reality, by which all all reality or the reality of all existence is informed so if you want to know what reality is if anybody wants to know what reality is all right he cannot know reality all right outside of these seven spheres or this seven dimension or this seven system of unit all right by which reality itself you see is defined and it is according to how reality is defined by this standardization all right that all living things all right it is it is within that definition of what reality is that all living things all created things whether celestial or terrestrial all right that is how they that is how they experience reality so the experience of reality the experience of reality by all created being all right is determined by how reality is defined all right according to this you know supernatural according to this divine all right standardization this units standard system of units which we call the seven dimensions here the phrase fourth dimension it goes to tell you that there is a first all right there is the second there is a third then the fourth and there is the fifth there is a sixth there is a seventh now listen so just in case somebody's wondering, where is this? Where is all of this in the Bible? Now, that is the reason the scripture talks about the creation. Genesis chapter one talks about the creation, all right, of the earth, all right, taking place in six days, and on the seventh, God rested. You see, this so-called six days of creation or when we call we refer as the seven days of creation which is inclusive of the day in which god rested all right originally are not days you see because if you go and look at that scripture very well if you look at that genesis about one very carefully you would see that all right why creation was going on all right there was no existence of days as it is now being experienced you see there was no such thing as days because how do you know, how do you measure a day? You measure a day or you measure days by what? By a reason of what? Sunrise and sunset. Which practically out of the earth, when you step out of this earth, all right, what informs sunrise and sunset, all right, is what? Is actually the earth's movement around the sun. The earth's movement around the sun. So what you call days, within the earth what you call days within the earth all right is subject to what the earth's movement around the sun so if the bible tells you in genesis 1 that god all right was creating the earth i'm sure you understand that god couldn't have been creating the earth all right from the earth all right he must have been creating the earth from outside the earth. You see, and as at the time he was creating the earth, there was no sun as at yet. From Genesis chapter 1, there were no sun, there were no sun. If there weren't any sun, because if you look at the account of creation in genesis chapter one you will see that it was not until the fourth day that the sun the stars and the moon were created see the sun around which the created earth was to revolve around which in turn 
means to determine what? Sunrise and sunset days come to existence, not until the being number in general. It was Moses who wrote the book of Genesis. All right. And he had to write, in writing rather, he had the of God he was brought into within the, you know, limitation of, of, of human. Because in order, because what was he saw in Genesis chapter 1, all right, predated, predated human civilization. So how are you going to appropriately capture you see, the events that predated human civilization? All right. How are you going to appropriately capture it within current human civilization? There was no better Moses could do that except to use what we call parables. So when Moses said the first day, when Moses said in Genesis chapter 1, he said the evening, the morning, the first day, the evening, the morning, the sixth, then he says, and on the seventh day, God rested. He was capturing the units, all right? He was capturing the units, all right, the system of units by creation. You see, he was capturing it within the context, you see, of current human civilization. Current human civilization in the day and time he lived, all right, which had come to know, you see, the, which had come to know, you know, the movement or the experience of time, who come to know the experience of time within the yardstick of what? The sunrise and the and sunset within the yardstick of the earth's movement around the sun. You see, but the current yastic by which time is ex movement around the sun, all right, did not exist. That current yast was seen into in the day of creation. You see, in that era, that epoch of creation, all right, the current unit for experiencing time did not exist then. So what he did was that in order to cap for defining reality by which time is to be experienced in that time, all right, in order for him to properly capture it, all right, he had to capture it within what? The current limited, you know, yardstick by which time was experienced by humanity. Hello, is this making sense to us? Yes, it is, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> all right you know i hope it is i hope it is because you see these are gone are the days where you anyone any spiritually any any serious spiritually minded person we hear this and say see all these things are too abstract see this thing <laughs> you hear of some of these notable men all right Having into spirituality within the framework of Buddhism, of you know, new age and all of that. Now, what do you think they are teaching them? That they in turn leverage on, you see, to not do their business. You see, which now gives their business, their product, all right such a breakthrough that it doesn't matter what anybody thinks. All right. They get their products into every home, into every hand. It isn't, it isn't particularly because of their 
you know, you know, overwhelming dependence on, on sales, sales secrets or marketing secrets. You see, at the foundation of those sales strategies and marketing strategies, all right, is strong, solid, hear this one. Pastor, it seems you are muted, so. Sorry about that. I'm muted. My network tripped off. I'm sorry about that. I just kept talking. My network tripped off and then we turned back. Hence why I became muted. Thank you very much. All right. So I was saying that, you know, tell your mind you can, you can, you can understand this. Tell your mind. You can understand this. You can understand this. You see? All right. So you see, now it's, I'm trying to explain something. So you see, what Moses, what Moses was actually seen. All right, thank you. What Moses was actually seen into in Genesis chapter one, which he captured within the context of parable, all right, is the standard, all right, the, the system of unit, you see, by which reality is to be defined and experienced by creation within the earth, because that was currently the system of unit by which reality, all right, is defined and experienced, all right, by other creatures, by other creations of God in other spheres. You see, and this standard or this system of unit or this standard for defining and capturing reality is what we call the seven dimensions. It's not seven days a week. It's what we call the seven dimensions. Now, during the course of this, you know, stuff, we are going to highlight, we may not go into detail, you know, because of the time, you know, except if, um, you know, maybe a question being asked, you know, demands for that. But what we intend to focus on is on the fourth dimension. Is the fourth dimension. All right. But let's take it, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, in bits. Now, the first dimension all right now it's important to understand that no there can be no proper definition there can be no experience of what reality is all right without you know there can be no experience rather of what true reality is outside outside of the outside of the unit system all right of the seven dimensions you see there can be no appropriate, there can be no complete, perfect, absolute experience, you see, of what reality is, you see, outside of the framework, outside of the framework of this unit system, you see. On the other hand, when a person or when, yes, let me use the word a person, all right, let me not sound spooky, don't scare anybody, David. Now, when a person, I was going to say when a being, all right? Now, when a person, all right, you know, experiences, or should I say, attempts to experience reality, all right, from one of the singular, you know, um, dimension of the seven, all right, there is a perspective that he will gain. You see, there is a perspective that he will have. You see, 
there is a perspective that you will have. But on the other hand, now, experiencing reality, all right, over and across or within the framework of more than one of more than one of these dimensions, all right, gives the person a broader perspective and a greater leverage, all right, where the experiencing of reality is concerned. You see, so the greater or the higher, you know, the consciousness of a being ascends, the higher the consciousness of a being ascends across the seven dimension, all right, the greater will be that being or that person's grip, or the greater will be, you know, the degree of, you know, leverage or the expression of dominion and influence that he can bring upon creation. You see? So when we talk about, when we talk about um, the fourth dimension, when we talk about the fourth dimension, all right, we are talking about functioning from a place, all right, within the framework of this unit system, all right, that gives a person a greater level of influence. Now, listen, a greater level of influence over creation. Listen. Now, when we talk about influence over creation, it is also inclusive of time. Time, time is a time can as well be influenced, you see, by someone or by a being functioning, all right, at a level within this framework of the seven dimensions, all right, in a way, all right, that commands, that commands, you know, the obedience of creation or that brings the obedience of creation under him. What is all this grammar? Drama is intended to help us capture the thought. All right. It's intended to help us capture the thought. All right. For example, um, the greater or the higher a person's consciousness ascends across the framework of the seven dimensions, all right, the less of an effect, the less of an effect, all right, creation can have over that person, including time. So in other words, for example, a person who is functioning from the fourth dimension, you see, will experience a lesser, you see, a lesser impact of time, you see, upon his affairs. In other words, he will function by functioning from within the fourth dimension, all right, he will experience the reality, all right, in a way that is, um, that is least impacted, that is least, you know, influenced by time. You see, this is one of the ways by which a person or a being can create what we call a continuum. A continuum. C-O-N-T-I-N-W-M. A continuum. All right? Whichever way you want to pronounce that. C-O-N-T-I-N-W-M. Thank you, James. This is the way you can create a continuum. Or this is the way... You can create multiple reality, multiple reality. Now, let me let me break it down a little bit. All right. Now, this is how a person or two persons rather, or a group of people or a number of persons can be living in the same geography and be experiencing life differently. You see, in the same land, in the same land. Yes, 
I'm, <laughs> I'm bringing science, <laughs> using scientific words, all right? That goes to show that, see the things, all these things you call scientific words, all right, are words, you know, used to capture actual, actual, actual spiritual operations. You see, now I'm, I was going to give you a very simple example, all right? Now, this is one, this is what you see at work. When you see two more persons living in the, in the same place, in the same geography, in the same place, the same environment, same place, all right? And yet are experiencing life differently. You see, now listen, one person is saying life is hard for me because of all the factors, not just all the factors surrounding him, but because of all the factors that is prevalent around all of them. As a result of all these factors, life is difficult for this one. Why the other one, all right, still in that same environment where all these factors are prevalent is experiencing life differently. No, 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 relax. Don't think maybe he has a godfather. No, it's not godfather. This is not about godfather. Mm. Because if you go and study scriptures, you will see these stories playing out. You will see it play out. You see? But maybe a lot of us didn't just pay enough attention to see that this was, this was what was going on. For example, in the scriptures, all right, you will see the story, all right, of what happened in Egypt, all right, and, the, of, and what was going on in Goshen. You see, or before then, you will see the story of Isaac, all right, whom the scripture says lived in a land where there was famine. Nothing planted was growing. But Isaac, on the other hand, still in that same land, received an instruction to sow. And the scripture says Isaac sowed in that land, in the land where everybody was sowing and reaping nothing. Isaac sowed in that same land, and the Bible says he received the hundredfold. Hundredfold meant that he received the full harvest of everything he put into the ground. He received the full harvest of everything he put into the ground. You see, now you see this kind of, you know, um, um, this kind of, all right, you know, parallel playing out through our scriptures. Through our scriptures. You see, many people have read it. Many people have read it. All right, and have, um, okay, uh, Okay, yeah, yeah, I'll go back to the door. Some of these things I'm mentioning, I'm gonna, we're gonna talk on them in bits. We're gonna talk on them, all right? You know, um, um, James is saying, if I can go back and re-explain what, now we're gonna, so don't worry, we're gonna touch on these things again, you know, break them down, you know, more. Just, we're just trying to lay some foundation. Now, um, please listen, these things are so important, I beg you. It's so important that, that, um, and you know the interesting thing about these things? It doesn't matter whether you agree or not. All right. Whether or not you agree, whether or not, whether or not you agree, all right, these things are either affecting you negatively or positively. All right. The reality as reality as it is the, the as it is defined, as it has been instituted, all right is either working for your good because of your knowledge and intelligence of these things, or it is working against you because of your ignorance. You see, now, but you see, when you look at, um, when you look at um, people being influenced, listen, when you look at people being influenced by the occult, people being brought under the power of sorcery, all right, it is largely as a result of you know people's ignorance of these things do you understand it is likely as a result of people's ignorance of these things you see let me put it this way it is actually to the degree to which a person is ignorant of these things that he can be brought under the power of sorcery that he can be influenced by occultic manipulations. You see, that is the reason why when you look at basic, when you look at, 
when you look at basic, you know, sorcery or cultic manifestation, all right, you will see that it is manifested in a way, all right, that compromises people on the basis of their ignorance or the ignorance they have regarding the spiritual, the true spiritual architecture and function of their hearts. You know, I've done different series, different teachings in different places, all right, on, on the subject of witchcraft, occultism, in many places. You see, many places. You know, so much so that over the years, all right, over the years, I have seen witches, I have seen witches that have left their witchcraft power that have become saved, delivered. I have seen occult men set free and delivered. You see, I was telling some of our folks, all right, some a while back of how, you know, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, you know, in fact, in, in, the, in the last six months, all right, in the last six months, I have had three, three different persons, one a woman, but three, total of three, three different persons involved in occult, reach out to me, reach as in they called me, three, all right, one didn't call me directly, one, all right, called me through you know, his daughter, a man, through his daughter, all right, whom had been playing some teachings in, to his hearing, and he became interested because he said in the teachings, I was explaining things that he knew of, things that he knew of, all right, by experience. Do you understand that? That was what aroused this other man's interest. But the three of them together reached out to me because they had things in some things, in some recordings we did, that aroused, you know, as far as they were concerned, they were amazed, all right, that things that they knew from afar, because they were functionaries of darkness, from afar, was being accurately explained by someone. It's amazing, all right? If I don't get any consolation, those are my consolation. <laughs> You know, these are some things we share. You see some pastors say, be careful of them. They are teaching you age. Be careful of him, teaching you age. And you see somebody who is truly operating in the supernatural, though in darkness, can relate to what I'm saying. And guess what? None of them eventually meet me and remain a witch. None of them eventually meet me and continue an occult person. They all become saved in Jesus Christ. You see, and yet you see one pastor you know, <laughs> saying I'm teaching demonic stuff. When the demonic hear their curiosity is aroused, we meet and they become saved. No, so if they are becoming saved, what are they being saved into? So they leave occultism and enter into what? And enter into new age. Does it make sense? They are practicing new age. So they leave new age and step into what now? And follow me into what? Into the new age, I'm being accused that I'm teaching. <laughs> what a life. <laughs> Just recently, another man who, who practices black magic, all right, he has eaten all kinds of things, offers sacrifice, you know, those all kinds of things. Called me, called me and said, you know, he had some stuff from his son that his son was teaching. And he asked his son, who is teaching this? And the son said, this is my pastor somewhere in Lagos. He said, okay. Uh, now this man collected my and called me and asked me, Do, have I written any books? I said, well, none yet that is released. He said, oh, that you would like to have my books. You know, I said, well, we'll have teachings. Ah, he will prefer books. He said, okay, no, when next are you coming to my region? The whole meeting. I said, very soon I'll be there. He said, when you come, let me know. I want to come for your meeting. <laughs> Somebody who practices black magic wants to come for the meeting I'm going for. <laughs> Do you understand that? <laughs> Meanwhile, some other pastors are telling their members, don't go to his meetings. Don't go. <laughs> you just... You laugh, you don't laugh at them, you laugh at the devil. You just laugh at the devil. All right. You just <laughs> you just you just laugh at the devil. You know, you know, 
<laughs> Very interesting, you know. You know, it's it's easy to say that those kind of things when and I do I don't I don't say this. I'm not saying this to you know speak low of anybody. You know, I say it from you know the 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 the, 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 the from the humility of my heart. It's easy to say these things when you have true revelations, true revelation of spiritual things, but that you are not practicing. That that's one of the challenges we have. When we have people who teach stuff that is true from scriptures, revealed to them by the Spirit of God, but that is not translating into actual experiences for them. It's like, let me get an example. It's like somebody doing a very solid exegesis on the provision of healing in the atonement, on the availability of divine healing in the atonement, yet, all right, he's not experiencing the sick being healed through his own hands. He's not laying hands to see the sick healed. He's not reaching out and laying hands on the blind. If you can teach on the provision of divine healing, but are you laying hands on cancer patients? You see, all right, for example, during the lockdown, you know, you probably will be shocked if I tell you the number of persons, all right, that contracted COVID. I don't mean it was not certain. It was certain. They were showing symptoms of the COVID virus that I minister to, all right, and they got cured. I mean, got cured without drugs. Went to check their results and it was all gone. Do you understand that? You know, it is one thing for you during that time to be preaching and be saying, COVID cannot exist in our presence. COVID cannot survive in our presence. You are saying all of those things. But how many, you know, COVID-infected persons have you laid hands on? All right? Have you spoken words over to see them healed? You know, that's just in my way of putting it. You know? All right. So please, let's just quickly type some things. Oops. It's about five minutes to seven. Mm. All right. So, so when you talk about the fourth dimension, all right, now, don't, just be patient. We are going to explain what is the first dimension, what is the second, what is the. We may not, we may not, depending, like I said, go into what is the fifth, but we would look at a couple of things in regards to what the first, second, third, then the fourth, all right, is. All right. Now, a lot of people, you know, have, of course, have read materials that talks about the seventh, sorry, the fourth dimension as being the dimension of faith. All right. Yes, that, that, that's, that's one way to put it. All right, but it is much more than that. You see, it is much more than that. You understand? Now, some persons probably have read, you know, materials that says that the fourth dimension is the realm of visualization. No, it's much more than that. All right. But first, we will begin to explain, which I already began doing, you know, about what, what we will talk about what, what is the fourth dimension. They will begin to talk about what are the things that are possible by functioning from the fourth dimension? What are the things that are possible? What is the level of, um, you know, what is the level of, of life, you know, or the quality of life that can be experienced when one functions from the fourth dimension? Now, don't forget, whatever it is we are sharing, we are sharing in view of, um, of the different sphere of life that we're involved in, all right? So it's not only, but of course, you know, which we, and I'm sure you know that we specifically highlighted forex traders, crypto traders, people in finance, you know, entrepreneurs and stuff. But you see, these things can be applied everywhere. But from time to time, we'll be hammering, you know, more specifically in relation to, you know, the finance space. All right. And you beat it down, you talk about forex trading and, and crypto. Of course, it can be applied to any and every other area of life. You see, all right. So, like I was saying earlier, so when you look at what the fourth dimension is, all right, now, in the fourth dimension, all right, time, such factors 
or such entities as time, all right, as time can be experienced or are, is experienced differently. There is a way time is experienced in the third dimension. You see, there is a way time is experienced in the second dimension and in the first dimension, you see, which is completely different from the way time is experienced in the fourth dimension. You see, in the fourth dimension, time as it were, exists as a sequence. You see, time exists as a sequence. In other words, you, from the, or in the fourth dimension, you can create multiple reality. You can experience reality, all right, from across multiple spectrums, all right? You can create, all right, your individualized experience of reality across multiple spectrums. You see, and as a matter of fact, it is also operating from the fourth dimension, all right, in relation to what I said about time, that allows for a person to predict. In fact, I'm sure you probably have heard about people who are called futurists, all right, or people who are referred to as practitioners of futurism. Now, futurism basically speaks about the art of predicting, you see, of predicting. Now, listen, futurism is not actually the art of predicting the future. It is actually the act of creating, all right, multiple sequence of future. You see, you create multiple sequence of future. Now, not understanding this is the reason a lot of believers have confused futurists to be prophets. You see, you hear people say that all prophets are futurists. Not necessarily so, because understanding the act of functioning from the fourth dimension can make anybody a futurist, a futurist. You see, when you look at these guys now that are not saved, who make predictions, you see, about the forex market, or who make predictions using movies, you see, it's not because they slept and woke up, no. They are, they are practicing futurism, all right, by harnessing, by harnessing the potential of their heart from within the fourth dimension. When you see movie directors who have produced movies or directed movies that predicted the future that is now being experienced by people, all right, that wasn't being prophetic. That was being a futurist. You see, that was being, or you see authors, writers and authors who have written books, all right, that predicted the future. You see, no, don't say they are witches, no. Now, this is something we are gonna be looking at. Now, within this, um, now we can call it a course. <laughs> we are gonna be teaching, you know, futurism. We are gonna be teaching very basic, lays very basic foundation of what futurism is, all right? That you can harness, that you can practice. You see, now there is nothing I'm going to just, just in case you are, don't be skeptical by reason of the words I'm using now. I'm using human words, I'm using modern day words, all right, for Bible operations, for spiritual operations. So be comfortable with the words I'm using, all right? Don't be a King James student, you know, some people who don't read the Bible outside of King James English, all right? I'm using modern day, we don't speak King James English today, all right? Like some people get uneasy when you use the word portal. But are you aware that Potter was talking about in the Bible? But it was something different. It was called something different. It was called open heavens. It was called open heavens. Why should you have issues with Potter? If the Bible was written today, it is present day English that will be used. That will be used. So don't get uneasy with the word Potter. What's the meaning of Potter? Potter basically is, it's not a new age word. It's an English word. For the new age does not have English. Doesn't, the English language has evolved. All right? That is the reason why the original English people can no longer take ownership of the language. It has involved different cultures, different, you know, languages, all right, have flowed 
you know, as like smaller rivers into the English language, making that is what is causing the English language today to be a universal language. It is universal not because it was forced on people, all right? It is universal because it has evolved into its current state, all right, by reason of the contributions, by reason of the contributions, all right, that have been made to it, all right, that have been made to it by, you know, the different cultures and languages, all right, of, of mankind. You see? So basically the word portal means point of entry, an exit, an opening, an opening. Mm. All right. So um, please, I want to implore us to not be in a hurry, all right? Um, because we're going to be bringing this session also again to a close, all right? It's two hours already. All right, this is um, four minutes past seven. So it's two hours already. Um, we don't want to take it beyond two hours so that people don't get tired, all right? So that people don't get tired and, you know, <laughs> someone saying, can we extend it? <laughs> well, um, <laughs> interesting all right um we don't intend to stretch it so that people don't get tired it's 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 like um you may call it a seminar you may call it whatever but um but like it's like we've said I, 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 yesterday i want to implore us to take this session seriously all right we are not charging we're not charging anything all right we are not charging anything you see, um, and I'll say this without, you know, you know, mising words, you know, I remember the last time I went for a training like this, when I was called to take a training like this, the people that put the whole training together, all right, you'll be shocked when I tell you how much they charged. You know, when I heard it, I was like, wouldn't it be too much? But I was shocked. <laughs> When I saw the number of persons that were present, I'm telling you, that came for the meeting, that came for the, it was not a meeting, they didn't call the, because people, Muslims, different kind of people came for it, all right? And it was a type of a business training meeting. People came for, people paid. People paid. They didn't pay 5K, they didn't pay 20K to attend the meeting, you know? So this is, you know, there's this attitude, you know, um, which I, I want to say it so that, um, you can check it. People, someone have said that what people do not pay for, they don't value it. Or that what comes to them for free, they will be lackadaisical about it. You know, they will just drag their foot, you know, but if they pay because they know their money <laughs> has been collected, they will want the money to waste. Don't let it be like that. Don't let your own case be like that. Don't just drag, don't. don't. Yes, it's free. It's free, all right, it's free. But like I've said to us, what we are sharing is not religious. What we are still trying to do is to lay some important foundation, all right, is to lay some important foundation. So if you've heard these things before, don't worry. It's so, consider what we've shared so far. If you've heard them before, consider what we've shared so far as some kind of a refresher course, all right? But if you're hearing for the first time, and it's sounding new and strange to you, don't worry, relax. You can research these things. Take your notes and research them. Don't be mentally lazy, all right? One of the traits of a mentally lazy person is that he hears something new that he doesn't seem to agree with or he doesn't seem to have heard before and he just pulls away and shuts down. No, it's not gonna cost you a thing to research what you have heard that you do not necessarily agree with or you do not necessarily understand. All right, it's not going to cost you anything to research it. You see, so but it's necessary that we lay these foundations. 
But one of the things that you can leave, all right, from the session of yesterday and today, all right, is the importance of taking, listen carefully, the importance of taking your spirituality seriously. Your spirituality seriously. All right. And one of the ways to do that will require that you start living. You start living from your heart. And one of the things you do to begin to live from your heart is this. You need to ask yourself very important direct questions. Learn to ask yourself questions that you don't sleep without arriving at an answer. Ask questions that confront, that challenges your persuasion. Ask questions, all right, that confront, you know, your convictions. You see, that confronts your convictions. You see? Ask questions, all right, that takes you beyond, all right, beyond, you know, the, the, the superficial motivation for why you are doing what you are doing. Ask questions that would burrow, you know, some kind of a hole, that would dredge some kind of a hole into the superfluity, all right, of your excitement for why you are doing what you are doing, for why you accept, for why, for what your motivations are. You see, one of the reasons, one of the benefits of doing that is that it helps to tear down, it helps to tear down the, the veils, it helps to tear down you know, the wrong label, so on, is giving you a wrong definition of who you are and giving you a false perspective as to what reality is, as to what your purpose in life is. Learn, learn to pay attention to yourself. Learn to pay attention to yourself. All right, learn to pay attention to yourself. You see, learn to take a look at yourself. Take a look at you. Learn to peruse. Learn to peruse. You see, you see what the guys in the world, what the guys in the world call mindfulness. Now, mindfulness is one of the practices in yoga. Now, I listen for your for your well being and your future psychological you know um sanity all right i would not advise you i don't advise anybody to do yoga you see yoga see the yoga that you see that is taught that is taught out there taught on the internet you will see page website where they will you pay money to do some special yoga courses some they give you some basic you know it's marketing they give you some basic tips give you some basic material to read they are pulling you in they don't tell you for advanced course, you know, for executives, pay some amount of money. Listen, yoga, that yoga that is peddled out there in the internet, all right, is a decoy. You see, is a decoy. Yoga at its core, all right, is one of the deep, you know, practices, all right, is one of the deep practices in New Age, which we see practiced in Hinduism, in Buddhism and some other religion. You see? So one of the things that is taught in yoga is mindfulness. You see, listen, there is a healthy, all right? There is a healthy mindfulness to practice according to the scriptures. According to the scriptures. That is what I was explaining earlier. You see? The mindfulness, the mindfulness that, you know, is taught in yoga. If you look, get check out those sites, the way it is taught, it is very, 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 you know, simple, very, very, you know, you know, it, it has nothing that is denoting, 
you know, of harm, of, you see, but listen, that's what it is, until you are sucked in. Because the practice of yoga will eventually, over time, expose a person to demonic influences. It will expose a person to demonic influences. You see, those are the kind of practices people go into until the little awareness of God they have disappears. You see, you see people who have gotten to a very strong stretch of practicing yoga come to a point where they no longer believe that there's a God. They no longer believe. They start believing in false, in false concept of creation other than what is scriptural. They didn't arrive there overnight because the practice of yoga, all right, over time causes the person's heart to become open to, you know, what seem at the surface seem to be, you know, harmless suggestions of demons, of spirits of error that speaks thoughts, concepts, ideas, philosophies into the heart of the person, which in turn brings the person to a place, or as it were, of a false experience of peace, while at the same time, all right, giving to the person, installing to that person, implanting to that person, all right, you know, an atheistic idea, all right, of God. So I don't believe in yoga. I wouldn't advise anybody to do it. Anybody who is practicing yoga is looking for trouble. At the beginning, it's harmless. It appears harmless, but it's not harmless at the end of the day. It is not harmless at the end of the day. All right, so um, we'll be bringing this session to a close. Let's see if we could take one or two questions that will be typed, all right, very quick. One or two questions. Yeah, when Yimi says it is taught as um, self awareness connecting to your inner self. All right, so um, those are the concepts that they use. Okay, yeah, someone is asking that um, I was initially talking about um, um, healthy mindfulness. How? All right, I was already explaining, you know, I was already explaining it, all right. When I was talking about um, the art, you see, the the art of um, confronting, confronting, you know, as it were, in quote, yourself, confronting your motivations, confronting your persuasions, all right, revisiting your convictions. You see, you realize that a lot of time when you do that, find out that concerning certain areas, find out that there are certain things you get involved in that you, do, they are, that you don't even have any conviction about, all right? There are certain things you 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 are engaging that your persuasion, all right, for doing those things actually are built on falsehood. They are built on super super superfluity. It's superficial, all right, at best. So you see, the act of confronting, confronting your conviction, the act of you know you know you know coming face to face, you see, with your beliefs, your philosophies, you see, all right. Now, you do, you carry out this act of confrontation, all right, by, listen, by taking truth, taking concept of truth, holding concept of truth on the one hand, all right, and hold it in view, all right, of what your current opinions about that area of life that the current concept of truth you now have all right, speaks about. You see, basically, it is the art of thinking, of thinking. Now, this thinking now is not just you, like I've, I often talk about, of you cracking your head. It is the art of you, you know, taking, all right, concept of truth, holding it in one hand and using it to confront or looking at it side by side with what your previous opinions were, with what your previous persuasions, convictions 
are or were about that area of life that that concept of truth speaks into. You see, now listen, God will not do this for you. Only you will do this. All right. Another way of referring to this act, all right, is this phrase used in the scripture, you know, called them, you know, taking heed to yourself. You take heed to yourself. Taking heed doesn't just mean be careful. Taking heed means to take, all right, truth, to take the concept of truth, to take the revelation of what true reality is that has been revealed to you, all right, and check it side by side against, you know, your current or previous persuasions, your current or previous convictions, your current or previous philosophies, your current or previous ideologies. You see, the act of minding yourself, you get that? The act of minding yourself. But what makes, listen, what makes healthy practice of mindfulness different from the mindfulness taught and proposed by yoga practitioners, all right, is that in healthy mindfulness, all right, you are carrying out the act of mindfulness, all right, via what? The materiality, all right, of truth. Via the materiality of, let me say, a different line of thought that has been communicated to you, all right, all right, comparing it and contrasting it with the previously held line of thought, with the previously, you know, held persuasions and convictions. You see, this is something that you must engage in. All right, where you think within yourself, you are thinking, no, you are not, you are not arguing, you are just thinking. You are looking, you are reflecting. Not just reflecting on your past. This is not, listen, this is not, you know, in reflecting, you're just reflecting on your past. No, this one is, it's an, it's, listen, that is why it's a bit of work. This one is not reflecting. This is not you just going through, it's not you just going down memory lane. This is you, all right, perusing, all right, previously held positions, previously, all right, held persuasions, convictions, philosophies, ideologies, all right, against, all right, a new concept of thought, all right? Like I said, a body of truth, all right? A new perspective of reality. This practice produces what we call the art of mindfulness. Uh, there are lots of questions here sent privately. Uh... All right, now, quite a number of questions here. Quite a number of questions here, but I'm not sure we'll be able to answer every one of them. Uh, yeah, James Takonde, you on point. James says, um, joining through the corridors of your heart, with or by the shining light of the truth. Yeah, okay, yes. Um, Ege, yes, you're on point. Yes. Um, 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 now, um, there's a brother called the gay. I call him Reverend Amadin. <laughs> All right, dear brother. Now, he at one time had uh, had a conversation with me about. Um, okay, let, let me read it. Though it's private, listen, but it's not. There's not. There's no secret to it. Now he says, uh, Pastor, sir, big red flag to new age, which is why I sent that chakras question, you know, to you way back. Remember? Yes, I remember. All right, again. He said, but I, I, I was, and I'm still wondering anything about the body that is authentic and original in God that the chakras are perverting. Yes. Yes. 
we will talk about that, uh, you know, not in this, <laughs> not in this meeting. All right, but uh, yes, there is something about the body. All right, there is interestingly, interestingly, um, in one of our in our you know most recently concluded um, just concluded um, men's conference, I began to touch it a bit. You know the body there was another meeting where i touched that you know the body what is it about the body we began to talk about the implications of um you know the forms of the body your ears your eyes you don't want to hear which one is that one again <laughs> all right so yeah yeah so yeah, we'll talk about that so what so there is there is there is a divine plan there is a divine purpose for the for the constitution of the body all right which the new age have perverted and they teach as you know chakras all right you know so yes uh, yeah okay someone says how can you tell when we progress from the fourth to the fifth fifth to the sixth it is say in the practice of ascension or your present state, lucid dreams. Is there any defined basis? Okay. Um... <laughs> no, I cannot give any highlights on the body now. All right, so that we don't we don't tear this meeting in in several different directions. Okay, somebody asked. Uh, that one just came in now. There are quite a lot of them here, private message sent, all right? So I'm sorry, what we would do is, is we would, during the course of the ongoing sessions, we would take the different questions, all right? We will do that. We will take the different questions and address them. That's the question that, you know, falls within the, you know, the context of what we are discussing, all right? Um, okay. Someone is asking, said, oh, is the heart also called the soul? Okay, let me quickly say this about the heart. Now, um, the heart, all right, many times, the word heart many times is used interchangeably for the soul. You see, while the soul too many times is used interchangeably for the heart, word heart, all right? But also, the word heart basically is used to describe, to describe, the compacted the compartment rather of man you see that registers the activities of both the soul and the spirit all right so in other words when you talk about man's heart all right in that regards you are talking about the 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 the, the, the operation of the soul and the spirit that is also the reason why in the scriptures all right Sometimes the word heart is used and the reference being made is to the spirit of man. Why some other times the word heart is used and the reference being made is to the soul of man or the mind of man. You understand? The reason is because the word heart basically, all right, the word heart basically, all right, you know, registers, all right, is that part of man that registers or is the word used to capture the, you know, operation of both, you know, man's soul and his spirit, the activity of man's soul and spirit. All right, so, um, so there, actually I have a lot of questions here on, you know, that was privately sent, you know, so um, what we would do is we would um, take those questions and look at them over the next, you know, you know, the next couple of, you know, sessions we are going to have. So, um, so really, uh, um, 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 I'm sorry that um, maybe some of us were probably expecting a session that will just be one, two days, you know, but um, I want to implore us to go on this journey, all right? I want to implore us to go on this journey, go on this journey, all right, with us. Let's go on this journey together. I, I promise you to be worth your time, all right? In other words, we are seeing that these sessions will run for a period of time, all right? We don't know for how long, but they are very, listen, I promise you, they are very basic things we want to touch on. That as soon as we've done that, all right, as soon as we've done that within the next uh, one to two weeks, as soon as we've done that, we'll suspend the training until a later time, all right? 
we need to touch certain things, you know, you know, and as soon as we've done that, we'll suspend the training. But the things we want to touch are things that will get everyone, you know, rolling, get everyone running, you know, get everyone speeding and flying in where application is concerned, you know, in relation to, you know, what you are doing, you know, whether as a Forex trader, as a crypto trader. And that is one area we are going to be dealing with. You see, is one area we're going to be dealing with, all right? But also can also be applied to you if you're an entrepreneur, you know, you're into business, all right? These things will help you to increase, listen, it will help you to increase your market base. It will help you, you see, a lot of people don't understand that when it comes to marketing and sales, you must understand that the best way to do it is from this concept of spirituality. Because see, people, people are spirits. It is from that spiritual point of view that you can, un you can best understand human behavioral pattern as it relates to their spending. We understand that there are different mechanisms studies that have been put in place, you know, to determine people's, um, you know, be behaviors where spending is concerned which you know big corporations particularly all the social media companies gathered as data you know to sell to big corporations which they now use you know to market things we know those things all right but listen listen there is something about you know the human behavioral pattern all right from the standpoint of the spirituals all right that once you have a grasp of it, it will help you, all right, to give your business a huge leverage. It will help to give your, your enterprise, your, your whatever it is you are doing, leverage. You see, one of the reasons why people run away from this, all right, is because number one, they don't know how, or they don't know that it exists. Or some who know, all right, run away from it because of the time, all right, they think it will take to harness these things, to practice these things. To practice these things. You see, when you look at such scriptures, all right, as um, Joshua 1.8, it's amazing. It's amazing. When you hear God tell Joshua in chapter 1 of Joshua, verse 8, he says, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. He says, need thou shalt meditate there in day and night, all right, that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. Then he says, then you will have good success. And you, he didn't say I, you will make your way prosperous. That's huge. That blows the mind if you sit down and think about that. You see? So these are some of the things over the course of, you know, this, you know, we're going to be opening up. And we are, listen, we are going to be doing it in a non-religious way. We're going to be explaining this in a non-religious way. So I want to implore you to hang around, all right? Continue to cruise along with us. Don't worry, you're not paying anything, all right? Except your time. So if it doesn't benefit you, you know, um, you, can, you can go unscratched, you know? <laughs> if it doesn't help you, you can just put it aside and just, you know, and just move on, all right? And just move on. At least there have been people who have paid for courses that didn't help them and they've already paid money. You can't collect your money. Back. <laughs> You're not paying. All right. Just, um, just tag along. Just tag along. Tag along. All right. Tag along. Now, so um, I don't know how we're going to do it, how we are going to help get you know, the recordings of yesterday and today across to us. But um, before we go, we are going to be meeting again. All right. We're going to be meeting again next week. All right. Next week, we are going to be meeting at least twice again. All right. At least twice. At least twice. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm getting both private uh, responses and, you know, general responses on Lucy Jimmy. Yes, we're going to explain Lucy Jimmy, but we need to go now. We do not intend to move this meeting beyond a two hour time frame. All right. This is already 7.32. That's already um, two hours, 30 minutes already. But we are going to explain lucid dream in our, you know, in the next meeting, we'll just quickly talk about it then, you know, or after or in between the, the next session, we'll talk about it and just move on. Right? So I want to implore you to, um, 
Okay, yes, thank you. Now, one of our brothers just said, um, for getting the recording, you can contact the number on the flyer. I'm sure we all have the flyer. So the number of the flyer, just contact the number of the flyer, you can get the recording, all right? You can get the recording. And it will be good. It will be good also. That's a good suggestion. You know, it will be good also if you can send your number to that number. If you can send your number to that number so that we can send you future updates, all right? For example, now we are going to be meeting again next week. Next week begins tomorrow. Tomorrow is Sunday. Is not the beginning of another week? All right. So we are not sure now whether it's going to be next week, Thursday and Friday, you know, because this meeting was supposed to be Thursday and Friday, you know, yesterday and the day before. All right. So it's most likely to be Thursday and Friday again. All right. Most likely to be Thursday and Friday because already we have other meetings. I have other, you know, online meetings, you know, during the week. All right. So, but it will be good after this meeting. If you can just, you know, um, um, text your number, you don't need to text your name, just text your number to the number on the flyer. All right. That way we can get you, you know, accurate information about the next time the meeting will be and the time, you know. So, um, um, we'll bring the meeting to a close now. So, we look forward to seeing you again. Well, we implore you until when we meet again to um, indulge your heart in thinking in the direction of the things we've shared. Take these things to heart, all right? Take, no rush. Take these things to heart, all right? Don't worry about where you are currently, what state you are currently right now, you know, what your lot is currently, all right? Um, commit to this training. Commit to these trainings, all right? Don't come out of anxiety about, you know, what you are, what your life currently is, what you want to achieve. Relax, come out of anxiety, all right? And, and I want to implore us to listen to some of the things we shared yesterday, some of the points we're making yesterday, all right? And some of the points we've made today, all right? So till we see you again, all right, keep being strong, all right? Keep being strong, keep being strong, all right? Grace to you.